I'm Lise Colucci, and I am one of Queen Being's life coaches, and I'm here to offer you support as you discover, understand, and overcome narcissistic abuse and how toxic relationships have affected you personally. So today, I wanted to talk a little bit about triggers or hoovers or anything that knocks you off your own track for healing. You know, you're going along and you're starting to feel better or you're like, you know, doing your thing and then you get a hoover or you have a mad trigger or something and it just throws you way off and messes up your whole day and screws it all up, basically. So what do you guys do to help yourself? One thing is when, you know, you have a trigger or you have... Hoover. I mean, it really can be anything that is taking you away from your own healing, right? Anything that's throwing you off track and um, stealing your focus, then, you know, you got to allow the feelings of, that you have in the moment and validate them. Because when we have been abused or when we've been around toxic people, we've had a whole lot of time where we haven't been validated and what we feel is, you know, pushed aside or we're not... Um, we're not able to express it or feel it. So we don't want to just go straight there. So give yourself a few minutes to just feel the Hoover. You can't stop it. You can't stop the feeling of adrenaline coursing through you when you have a trigger or you've been Hoovered. You just can't. It's just, it's your body reacting to stress, right? So just allow it and know what's happening. I know I'm totally stressed. I'm feeling triggered. Okay, this is adrenaline. All right. So then breathe. That's the second one. Breathe, breathe and allow it breathe and allow yourself to feel what you need to feel and know that you're going to get through it. Okay. And then get out and get active. This is like the best thing for me personally. I don't know a lot of people. I realize a lot of people get triggered when they walk some people and some people it is absolutely essential. So taking a walk, if you can, if you can't, then get active in the house, start cleaning, start doing something active that you can distract yourself with. Um, that anxiety that you're feeling that um, adrenaline pumping through you needs to go somewhere because once you have it, it's like it's like a it's like a um, well, it's a hit of adrenaline. What are you going to do? If you just sit there, you're going to you're going to spin your wheels. You know, you're going to the anxiety is going to rise and the adrenaline is going to just keep coursing. You have to move it out. You have to move it through. And, you know, we think it's all emotional, but once it hits the body, it's it's also physiological and we got to move it and respect the body for telling us it needs to move around. Um, and then mindfulness. Yes, that is another great way to calm it down and bring yourself back to your own center and bring yourself into the moment rather than, you know, getting usually a trigger or a Hoover will take us into the past and then throw us into the future. And we bypass the, the moment we're in, right? Because we're going, oh my gosh, this happened. It's just like before, you know, it's, rem it's a reminder or if it's a Hoover, it's, you know, it may bring up memories that are good or, or bad. It doesn't, it can be either. And then it throws you straight into the future of what will be, what's hap what's going to happen, what are they going to do next, or um, what ifs, you know, all of that. So mindfulness can help bring you back and keep you focused. So, and there's lots of techniques and there are a lot of videos and there are a lot of teachers and whatnot out there that can help you with mindfulness practices. I have a couple videos, three, I think on it. Angie has a bunch and I mean, a lot of people do. So look those up if you need them. And so once you've had a moment to collect yourself, take action toward finding your way back to your goals, finding your way back to yourself. I'm not talking about when you're newly discarded or when you're, um, you don't have a plan yet and you haven't found your focus yet. I'm talking about when you're derailed, you know, when this stuff just like totally knocks you off track and you think, whoa, I'm way back here again. What happened? I was fine. I was doing so good. And now, and now then now I'm not doing so good anymore. You know, I'm talking about those times. Take action to get back to where you were or even, you know, see if it can help propel you forward. So basically you use the energy, you know, take back any amount of control that you have because by taking back any amount of control that you have towards yourself, you are regaining your agency and the agency to act upon your own will is crucial to your healing and to your thriving. So um, anything you need to do, if it's blocking, setting a boundary, you know, it depends on what the situation is, right? So figure out what it is that you can do about the situation. And if there's nothing, let it go and move forward towards your own healing. Forget, forget the Hoover, <laughs> right? Um, and remember to affirm that you've got this, that you can take care of yourself and you are, you have been, and this isn't a setback. 
This is just what happens when a person is triggered or hoovered or anything like that. And, you know, the body takes over, right? And the minds and the emotions take over. So it's it's just what happens. And you, you can affirm to yourself that you got this and you can get right back on track. Another thing that I find useful is to take a break from it and call a friend, go hang out, go do something fun, do something for you, because that puts you back into a self focused mindset instead of, and when you're with that friend, don't be dwelling on what happened. I mean, mentioning it's fine, but change the topic, find positive things to talk about, find um, anything that is a shared interest, something, anything, tell them a story, anything, (laughs) get them to tell you a story, anything, just do something that isn't driving you back down into the hoover or the trigger i mean mentioning it and venting is one thing but then let it go and move forward because use this time to take a break from it so that you can get back on track it's letting go of that anxiety because what happens is it steals our focus and then the rest of the day becomes about them again and the whole point is we're trying to get away from that what helps you regain your focus towards yourself i mean the whole point is to not spend our lives dwelling and ruminating on the people that we've left for good reason. You're going to feel what you feel in your body. And usually you associate something with your mind. So if I feel anxious from a trigger, I feel adrenaline. What I'm feeling is the adrenaline and the cortisol rising and the, you know, those kind of things. And they don't feel really good. I used, I deliberately tell myself that I'm having a trigger that I've had a trigger, I've had an experience where I am remembering something or it has triggered an emotion that I don't want to feel right now or that I don't want to feel ever. And I take that and I say, okay, but now I'm filled with all this feeling of energy and anxiety. What do I do? And I will find something to do to put my focus on, if that makes sense, and use the energy. Self-care kits, create one. Make something for yourself that you can go to so when you have a trigger or you have a hoover or whatever it is that has a bunch of stuff in it that nurture your senses Um, or creativity nurtures your creativity because that's a way to take your focus back, right? The whole point is we got to take our focus back from the toxic person in our life or people in our lives. You guys take care and I'll see you guys. Bye.